Hello, welcome to the Utah Puck Report. I'm your host, Jay Stevens. Uh, it's just such an honor to keep getting to know our, our NHL team, and it just uh, blows my mind every time I see that we have an NHL team. Yeah. And Bill, you've, you've been on my show a little bit and a couple times, and we've got to know you, and I feel like we're I'm getting to, to know your personality a little bit more. And there's one thing, you know, you want to ask somebody, you want to be like, hey, what's new? <laughs> And for you, that's got to be an amazing question, right? Because wow, everything's new right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> new house, new dressing room, you know, new office, you know, some new players. So, are you getting uh, settled in? You find a nice, nice yes. place. Last time I, you were looking, uh... yeah, we 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 found a nice place just outside the city there, and uh, it's it's going to be great. We're not we're not fully moved in uh, yet, but we're getting there. Um, got to meet the neighborhood the other day when you, and that's a good thing about in Utah when you go in and you get to move in is that everybody comes out to see you and you get to yep. meet the whole neighborhood. So it was really good. But uh, yeah, we're super excited about uh, about getting getting settled and uh, people have been very you know uh, just so much enthusiasm towards the club. It's been great. One of the things I've noticed um, is that as I've talked to a lot of the other players, they seem to be buying places that remind them of home and everybody's been able to find yep. a neighborhood that like, Hey, this reminds me of Finland or this yeah. reminds me. Did, did you find something? I like did. It? I did. It's, it's the exact same where we lived in Toronto. It's like a mirror of what we, uh, the housing, uh, the older houses that we like. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been, yeah, that's, that's funny you say that. So it's very much like, uh, Toronto where we lived. Yeah. That's so weird. Cause I never thought about that as you know, I've come and gone from Utah most yeah. of my life and, I've never realized that we had so many places that were like other places, yeah. but it seems like every guy I've talked to so far has been just like, yeah, I found a place that reminds me of home, and I feel and I feel like I'm at home. Do you, yeah. Are you feeling that way now? Yes. It, it, you know, when you when you come in, it's a whirlwind of trying to get to this place, go go meet this person over here, and then all of a sudden it just sinks. You know, you get comfortable and you're you're used to your drive to the rink and that, and it's only been six months you know yeah. but it's it seems like it's been 6 years you know so it's it's truly like it's been sped up but in a good way you know and and we and for me personally I can't speak for the other staff members but I do feel at home here uh it's been great and it's it's like we're ready to get going we you know we still have five exhibition games to go but it's like we can't wait to play yeah i can't even imagine and i was saying i was saying the exact same thing the other day i'm like man all i've been talking about is is what's going to happen and what's going to yeah, happen and yeah. what's and then all of a sudden it's here and there's, I don't know if you've seen, there's a little video going around of you up in the suite during the preseason game yep. and you kind of, you're rubbing your hands together <laughs> and it's like, all right, now you're, it's here. It's, yep. it's real. And first I'm going to, I'm going to give you a three part question. So I don't forget to ask it. Uh, one, like the atmosphere for the preseason game yep. Two, looking at that, just being like, is it a little bit of a relief to say like, okay, the product's on the ice. It all worked. We have a locker room where it's official. And then three, all the puzzle pieces that you have are starting to come together. And yeah. I think like, it feels like you have more pieces than you've had before to put this puzzle together. Well, I think as a GM, I'm probably going to answer these all together. As a GM, you never feel settled because there's always injuries, right? So, yeah. you know, when you look at the, you know, the Delta Center and, and the vibe and, and the atmosphere the other night, it was incredible for us. Like, it was literally like a playoff game. You know, every time we touched the puck, there was, ah, you know, so – that doesn't get old for our group, yeah. you know, um, and, and it's really exciting um, for us because, you know, as an organization, you know, we didn't have that fan base, unfortunately, where we were, and now we do. So we value it. We probably have a greater value and, and appreciation than any other NHL team for it. Um, and our players, you know, were just like, they were like little kids playing there the other night, you know, just like oh, looking around and, you know, and just how, how cool it is. And, and it's a unique building to play in because of the steepness of the stands. And if you really look at it, you're like, it's almost, it's very intimidating uh, when you're on the ice. And so if they, I think our, our, our players like that, you know, because I think it can be an intimidating building for other teams to, to play in. And they told us about the metal roof and the projection of sound down and how loud it is yeah. in there. And it's one of the loudest NBA buildings. Uh, so, you know, we're going to take advantage of that and hopefully make it the loudest NHL building. Yeah, it uh, for me being there and listening to like, you know, we had two quick goals. We had a couple fights and that's and it just went. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. there was just the, the frenzy of attitude there. And then I went around and I was talking to people and interviewing people and I got back and you know, I have some pretty good equipment that I just yep. bought to interview you guys, and it was so loud that you couldn't really yeah. even hear the interview with the fans. And that's 
I mean, it sucked that I lost most of that stuff, yeah. but it also just went to prove the fact that that place was buzzing. Yeah, and that's, you know, when you, you know, Ryan and Ashley Smith and the SEG group, they, they, they moved the team here. You never know what's going to happen. Like, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of things that, no. you know, so when you actually see it come together and you see the colors of the jersey uh, and you see the players that we've assembled and the pieces, you know, and we don't know if they all still fit, but you can kind of get to – there's a good – base of talent with young and old on that team and, and everybody is enthused about playing here it's it's just really exciting place uh, for us to be yeah and and you talk about bringing in all the players and some sometime when you know we bring you into KSL and we roll you through every yeah, place yeah. I'd really love to and I think my fan base would really love to sit down one day and just go like talk in depth over some of that yeah because I've seen I'm seeing some moves I've, I've looked at some of the stuff you did in St. Louis and I think it was uh, Eric Johnson was a, was a piece that you moved. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You you moved like he was an yeah. important piece, right? Yeah, it, that that that's a that's a whole day conversation. Yeah, you go, go through some of that stuff, you know. Um, but I'm seeing some similar. Are you starting to see that stuff come together like it came together in St. Louis? Well, well yeah, it, it took some time. You know, people don't realize the length of that uh, that build it took us in in to get you know Peter Angelo from being a little teenage boy to <laughs> to wearing a C and lifting a cup over his head took a long time. Time. Yeah, and that's and that's something that people don't understand is like it, it just doesn't happen overnight. And I think when you try to rush it, it blows up. And like I would give you this equation that people don't really understand. But there was a reporter in, in Montreal one time and he was giving it to me about how much our organization and franchise sucked. And I looked at him and I said, look at that. Look at the banner over your head. That's the last time you guys won it was 30 years ago. You have every resource in the world. Every resource in the world. You make more money than any most NHL teams do, and you still can't win a championship. And one of the reasons is because of the patience level in Canada. It's win today. It's win this moment. It's do whatever you have to do. And when you do that, you can't really build teams properly or sustain that 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 type of growth through that period because it's all about now. And that's the greatest thing that 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 you know I believe we can achieve in this franchise here is the patience. You know, build it properly put the right talent on the ice and let it grow. And when you do that, you get to get a chance to win a championship. But it's, it's you know, you look at the Florida Panthers, everybody says, oh, the Florida Panthers. Yeah, but Ekblad took how much time? You right, know, yeah. You know, he was there for a while, the Reinhardts of the world. And look at Barkoff. Look at all his ups and downs. Yep. And, you know, how old some of those guys were. You know, most of their D were 28 years old. You know, there's... Well, and Bobrovsky was... Th everybody thought he was done for, right? Yeah. Everybody, he yeah. was already the second guy. Yeah, so it, it, it takes... It's a little bit of a patient game. Um, but when you get the right talent on board and you and you and you play the patient game with the right coaching, you have a chance. Um, but it's it's a proven re recipe of like not rushing. If you look at some of the teams that have tried it, you know it's just like they're they're in win now mode so much that they never really get a chance to build it properly. Yeah, and it's been really fun to see the seeds that you have in the yeah. like your your recruit class. Your you you know looking at Lamaru. Yep. And you just salivate when you see a kid like that. I mean, the, yep. you see the potential, you see the size, and you're like, you know, if that kid comes in right and you don't rush him and you don't ruin it, yeah, that, that kid could be a number one all day. He's he got can, the size and the potential. He does. There's a, I mean, we're going to spoil our fans, I, I believe, with some of the kids that are, are slowly coming through. It's going to take some time. It's a little bit different than the NBA. Our kids take forever. Um, you know, you draft them and they're oh. they're gone for two years, and they come back. We send them to the minors, and then you know, three or four years later, they're they're they're, they're back in the picture. Um, but we, you know, from T. G. Ginla, you oh. know, to Lamru, to Colbo Duan, um, you know, to some of the other prospects that we have coming through, the Dudas of the world, the Simashevs and the Boots and the Harabels. Um, there's some good pieces there. Um, there's some really good talent there that can help move this franchise forward if we groom it prop, groom them properly. Um, and have our development staff work with them every single day, um, get them eventually into the into the minor leagues and, and groom them from there or get them into the NHL, whichever comes first for them, and, and help them. I always say you, you raise them up right. You know, you raise yep. them properly through the process. And uh, when you do that properly, you end up guys with guys like Dylan Gunther, you know, that, that have played a little bit in the minors and understand what it's like to be sent down and be called up. And, and eventually they get some scar tissue and really achieve. So... Um, you know, we're looking to do that with our prospects and, and raise them up right. Yeah, and it it seems like that's working, and it seems like your entire staff, Bear knows, like he yeah. said, you set him down and said, hey, it's going to be rough. 
and it's going to suck for a minute, but we're yeah. going to, eventually we're going to be good. Yeah. And Utah is benefiting from all the work you guys have done. And, and just for me, just watching the talent and, and watching Cole Baudouin, like, yeah. man, that kid, yeah. he's got to be ahead of the schedule from where you thought he was going to be coming in or yeah. I mean, maybe not. I mean, you guys scout him pretty well, yeah. but for, for me to see a kid get drafted and then seem like he fits in pretty well, pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the exciting part of some of our, our, our young picks is that you, you can see when they come here where they're going to fit and what they're going to be able to do. And it's only a small snapshot. Um, but you know, we, we get excited about the kids, but then, you know, at the same time, when you're trying to bring them up right, you don't want to give them too much or, or put them in a situation where they're playing under 10 minutes and they're not developing. And so it's 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 having the ability to project and say, hey, listen, he's going to need to go back to junior for another year, another year of college, and get a little bit better before he comes back. Because also the other thing is people don't understand is your team, our team is changing. We went from a, a, a team where Moser, Vegmalka, you know, and, and Gunther of uh, the world can walk in and, and, and our team was in going through a rebuild phase where they can actually make our team. Now our team has now added so many different pieces yeah. through free agency, through drafts, and slowly matured the Clayton Kellers of the world, the Krauses of the world, the Michellis of the world. Our team has become better. So it's not as easy for them to walk through the door and make the club, um, which is a good thing overall because I think sometimes, you know, if you give it to them too early – um, they they don't understand you know how hard it is to make a, to make it and uh, sometimes when you put them in some situations to groom them and raise them upright they come back with a little bit more fight. Yeah, I think and I actually just put a story out the other day about Kyler Yamamoto coming in yeah. and and two years ago that guy you you would have just been like that guy's on right away. Yeah, and this year yeah. he's got to make the team and then you know the he's got to be on the bubble. Yeah. Uh, and you know. And then the defense change that you made and bringing yeah. in Ian Cole. And it, were you part of his draft? Like, were you there yes. when? Because yeah, he was yeah. drafted by St. Louis yeah. and you were there, right? I told Ian actually the story. So, our head guy at the time was Yarmo Kekalane, and, and Yarmo was a fabulous scout. And um, he was my boss at the time. So, we had three first rounders in that, in that draft. Oh, yeah. And we were just salivating. And, and, and Ian was a little bit down on our list where he's kind of in no man's land where he wasn't high enough on our list to get him. So, and he walked in and he tested for us. And you ever see how he's built? <laughs> yeah, like a freight train, you know, and he walked in and, and, you know, all, all we were all salivating and he got moved up the list to where we got him. So, <laughs> and that, and that draft was a banner draft for this because we drafted Lars Eller uh, with our, with our, our first pick, then Cole, then David Prawn. all are still Jeez. playing, yeah. all went on to win Stanley cups. Unreal so, picks. Yeah, it was a game changer for our, that, uh, our organization at the time. Yeah. He's a key pick, pick up in my mind, not, you know, he's got the experience. He's got the yep. Stanley Cup. He's got that Stanley Cup swagger that comes with it, right? Yeah. The leadership in the locker room. But also coming in with, what, 17 years in the NHL or 15, wherever he's at. Yeah. Um, nobody's going to outwork the kid, that guy. No. Like, And I, what a way to lead by examples to get out there. And if you, you watched him in the playoffs last year, man, he's – his guts were just out yeah. there, man. He was just playing his he, guts out. He plays hard. It's interesting. Like, I, I didn't know him as much – uh, coming up, he played at Notre Dame after we drafted him, um, but he went back and forth in the minors in St. Louis down to Peoria at the same, at the time. And just watching him now and on how he 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 interacts with the group and his veteran presence is amazing. Yeah, he's an amazing person. Uh, I, I've been lucky enough as I was an equipment rep, and when he was at Notre Dame, yeah. I supplied him with his sticks and all kinds of stuff. So I've known him for a long time. I think he's a phenomenal player. I think you guys have done a phenomenal job. Uh, I just like most Utah hockey fans. Uh, I'm just over the moon excited about everything that's coming and all the work that you guys have done. We're just we're pumped. I keep, I hope that Delta Center buzzes 41 plus yeah. times this year. I hope it just the intensity just stays and keeps going. I know you guys are doing your job. Ryan and Ashley are doing their job. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember before I wrap up, there was one question I really wanted to ask. Is Ryan told me when he went out and met with you guys in, in Arizona the yep. first time, and he said, what are your needs? And I, I, th I think he – like he – didn't he have like a checklist? He wanted everything yeah. from nutrition to locker room or whatever. What was your number one need? Do you remember telling him, like, this is one thing I need? Uh, or was that too – was that too crazy a long time ago? Um, I, I think he had a – a genuine uh, ability to sit in that room and be himself with our players. And he instantly won them over. Um, I don't know how. It was just a special way that he had. Um, 
for me, I, you know, I, at the time, you know, I guess the need was just understanding where we're going to play, where we're going to practice, you know, can, can we get this to a level that is NHL standard and, and can we get it there fast? You know, so we didn't know there was a lot of, it was a tough time for us in, in the sense that there was a lot of unanswered questions. Um, and so as we moved through the process, you know, and them explaining, hey, we're going to play here, we're going to do this, this, it, 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 they just, you know, I, I always say this a hundred times a day, confidence comes from a source. And they had owned the NBA team and done such a great job with the building and everything. You you could see what they could do right away. And they'd done some renovations um, uh, and, and the people that they had in place and the infrastructure to do it gave us great confidence that, hey, listen, they could pull it off. They could go build a dressing room that, that wasn't there before. They could go build our practice facility, a temporary practice facility, and pull it off. And then at the same time, negotiate to buy a mall for our full-time uh, NHL practice facility that that will, will soon be one of the best in the, in the NHL. And, you know, we got confidence from their past and what they could do. And let me tell you something, they blew it out of the water. Um, their group, they have a saying, you know, one team, and it's true. Uh, they all work together to make it happen. So many people inside that uh, organization work countless hours to s- not only build stuff, but sell tickets. Yeah. You know, we forget on the hockey side because we become ultra focused on our jobs. There's so many people that work weekends to, to sell tickets and get it up and running and they, they blew it out of the water. It's, uh, it's really, it's really unbelievable to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, we're excited, Bill. I, I think we've probably kept you longer than I'm supposed to, but, Sorry. uh, one day we're gonna. I, I want to sit down and and my audience wants to hear from you. We want to just more discussion on, on players and and also we, we're gonna have to kind of come up with a template or because um, there's a lot of new hockey fans too. Yeah. You've got yeah. you've got an established base, but there's, yeah. we're gonna have to start figuring out a way to, to teach the game. Well, one of the things I think we need to do is also get an understanding of the expectations of the team and wh- where the team's at in the rebuild and understand where we came from and then, you know, go from there. So we're, hopefully we can uh, do, you know, sit down and talk at length. We'd love to do that with you guys. We're a pretty transparent hockey group, uh, you know, that, uh, that believes in, you know, building off the ice and, and having from the front office down to the players – you know, an elite, uh, an elite's uh, basically organization from top to bottom, and we we believe that will translate to a to a Stanley Cup team on the ice. Yeah, that's the one thing I've definitely noticed is from watching Arizona games last year and not knowing you people personally yeah. from top to bottom, yeah. and then having you come over and every person I've met that came over, uh, Jeffrey included, ev- ev- everybody's just top yeah. notch, and it just seems like you guys just needed something else you just yeah. needed a fresh start because the people are there yeah and you guys have the, the well right one thing I, I didn't get the uh the athletic genes that i hope for like bobby Orr or wayne gretzky and um, but i did get the the ability to uh, navigate and only be attracted to good human beings so that is something that um, i don't last long in a room if they're bad so phenomenal phenomenal well bill thank you so much for your time Thank you. And, Pleasure. Uh, I can't wait for our next conversation. I can't wait to see the next game. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited too. It's preseason, you know, so we only got five left, but uh, we're really excited about uh, we can't wait to play the, the uh, first home game. Yeah, us too. And good luck in Vegas. Thank you. That is the Utah Puck Report. I want to give a special thanks to Chipman Roofing. These are hockey people supporting the hockey community. It's Chipman Roofing. For all your roofing needs, uh, just check out chipmanroofing.com. And if you like what you hear on the podcast, please leave a review, leave a rating. Wherever you listen to your podcast, uh, make sure you give us a rating. like to uh, check out kslsports.com as well. Uh, there's going to be more hockey on there. As, as more hockey comes up, it's going to be always right there, kslsports.com. Big thanks to Madison Miller for putting up with us and making this thing work. Yeah.